Welcome to Orthodox Christian Theology. This is Craig Trulia. Mike Lofton wanted to get an answer to a question, and we're going to give him the answer. So let's play the clip. You have what's called a partial schism here. Some Orthodox would call it that way. Is that really what we see when it comes to the first millennium? Uh, when somebody was excommunicated, were they excommunicated from the common union or were they just excommunicated from that bishop only? Uh, it's an interesting question. We'd have to really look into that, really dive into that. Uh, was the first millennium okay with this form of ecclesiology of just this partial communion? Well, I could be in communion with you in communion with so-and-so, but you don't have to be in communion with so-and-so. You can call him a heretic, but I'm going to be in communion with you and with so-and-so that you're calling a heretic. How does that work? Give me some good concrete examples of that in the first millennium. I would like to see it. All right. So let me very quickly give a concrete example on what we some of your time. It's called the Malaysian Schism, Mike. We've talked about this. Um, and so during the Malaysian Schism, Rome was out of communion with um, Constantinople and Antioch over the issue of Malaysius, who was the bishop of, of Antioch. Then, by the Council of Constantinople I, Alexandria, Antioch, Constantinople themselves, they're all together, they have a council together, and formally, Antioch and Alexandria go back into communion, but Rome was not back in communion with Antioch, though Rome was in communion with Alexandria. So, how do you explain that? I don't know. I guess you can't. Not with the paradigm you're working with, because you're presuming that, oh, well, that never happens, and because Roman Catholicism is held in the thumb of the Pope, that can't happen. But maybe, I guess, the Pope is always the exception. He could be in tangential communion with other people, but when he does it, it's okay. So if this show has blessed you, Mike, because I gave the answer to your question, you could donate money to orthodoxchristiantheology.com slash donate. And it goes to not Reason Theology LLC, but it goes to helping people in Cambodia build the churches there. There's parishes in Siem Reap, in Phnom Penh, and Sihanoukville. You could also go ko-fi.com slash orthodox christian theology, not orthodox christian theology, ko-fi.com slash orthodox mission in Cambodia. And that's scrolling on the bottom of the screen. And you could become a week uh, monthly contributor to helping the parishes in Cambodia. So those are wondering, I just gave the answer to Mike Lofton. It's called the Malaysian Schism. You could find other similar instances. We find this, for example, when um, the Bishop of Rome excommunicated, and as, as did uh, Cyril of Alexandria, they excommunicated Nestorius, but they didn't excommunic excommunicate John of Antioch, all right? And they sent letters of excommunication to Nestorius, but they didn't send them to John of Antioch, though they sent letters to John of Antioch saying that they're excommunicating um, Nestorius. Um, so this is something that's happened other times. And I'm just going to leave it there because any longer kind of, betrays the point, why should I dig deeper into this when there's just obvious examples of Mike being wrong and another example where Roman Catholics have to read church history and not just base their whole theology on philosophy. It has to be based upon the precedent of the church and the fathers and the scriptures. Well, that is it. I got to go. God bless you guys. Have a great day.